Good right. morning. Welcome back to Wake Up Wednesday. I'm here with Nicholas and Aaron, and uh, we've been having uh, a wonderful time doing these what we call mid rashes uh, studies. Talks about you know just learning different things, learning learning from each other and growing with each other, and and um, we want to thank you all for all the support that Absolutely. we've been getting, all the mm -hmm. uh, comments and. Uh, there, there may be few, but it's it's many to us. You Absolutely. know, it, it, yeah. it, it it stirs a a fire in us, and it, it uh, we're growing and uh, we're learning just as well as whoever we're talking to. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's it's been a blessing to do this every week, and uh, it is it is truly crazy to see people watch this. Yeah. 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 So this is episode thirteen. Right? Yeah. For 13 or 14, yeah. I think it's 13, yeah. But, yeah, people are still tuning in. Yeah. Like, we're still getting views. People yeah. are still interested in what we have to say. <laughs> yeah. It blows my mind. Yeah. yeah. We're but, still uh, we're still working on some things. We still got a lot of – we want to get some more content out to you guys. Uh, unfortunately, we're not uh, filthy rich, so we can't just do this 24-7. You know? <laughs> we do have full-time jobs. We do work every day yeah and so uh we're not always able to get out the content that we really want and uh to get out to get the word out uh, yeah i don't want to say content but that's what it is but yeah. it's more or less the word you know and um <clears throat> we're just uh, excited about uh, uh, things that are happening in our lives just from doing this from from us coming together and uh just being a part of each other's lives, talking because a lot of off-air stuff gets said that it helps us spiritually grow with each That's other good, and yeah. things like that. So uh, we love the sport, love everybody, and uh, I think we're going to get into it. Yeah, what an intro! Uh, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but to that, I just wanted to highlight. You said you said something interesting. You know, the fact that. Um, like we've seen some growth in our own life. Like you guys, yeah. would you guys obviously agree with, with with that? Like just a simple fact. I I could I can honestly date back to like when we started this podcast or started the ideas of this podcast to now. Like I don't feel like I'm the same person, and definitely spiritually, I think there's been a lot of spiritual growth. I mean, like today, I like got cussed out for shooting a certain score on a golf course. Like and I'm like, yeah. I'm Never playing with you guys again. You know what I mean? And I was able yeah. to just make that decision. Like, yeah. there's, I can, I can tell that there's something else. Like, there's a separation yeah. happening in oh, my yeah. life. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's just like that continuation of like, <clears throat> you know, stuff like I seen back in like when I was in high school. Like, you know, I could, I could tell that there was something different about about me that I, you know, was being set apart. And I'm sure you guys experienced the same thing. But I'm, I'm telling, I'm saying that even more. I'm seeing that even more now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah it's been kind of interesting. So. Yeah, that's what. Uh, that's one thing that um, that um, what I see in my own life is that um, before we started doing this, um, there was hard. There was hard times, you know, hard times spiritually in my life that I was going through, and and I'm not just saying. I'm not saying this to be cliche, if that's the right word. Yeah. But Some now, 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 when I wake up and when I go throughout my day. It's there's nothing that I want to listen to, that isn't teaching or that's mm -hmm. something yeah. that's towards uh, our Savior Yeshua. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. So it's it's like in my mind, even when I wake up in the morning, like, who am I going to listen to? You like, mm -hmm. am I going to find somebody to listen to yeah. that's you know, yeah, that's uh, edifying me yeah. or not edifying? You know, yeah. just uh, allow me to learn throughout my day, even. You know, even if I'm doing stuff wrong on the job, I'm at least doing something right, you know, yep. spiritually, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's what I've, um, that's one of the things that I've, I've seen a growth in my life is just, it's almost like a constant, uh, you know, even because my mind gets scattered all throughout the day. I think we all do, you know, but yeah. uh, there's always a constant like coming back. Like, Absolutely. Okay, what, yeah. what, you know, I was listening to this. What was he saying about, yeah. you know, and then you yeah. go back to it and you start listening to whatever, you, you know whatever he was listening to. But yeah. Also, uh, I think it was our first episode or our second episode. I said that, um, I was going through something and that I was, uh, asking the Lord to be delivered, you know, from mm -hmm. some things. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, there was, uh, uh, my, 
my uh, fiance, somebody was talking to her, and they said, how did Nate quit chewing tobacco? Mm. You know, because I've been doing it for 15 years, almost 20 years, you know? Yeah. 15 years. Was it 15 or 20? Because it was 15. Your, 15. There's a big gap. In 18. Between. Okay. I started at 18. Yeah. What are you? I'm 33 now. Math. 18. So that's 17 or years. Or 15. 17 would be uh, 35. 15, 15 years. Yeah. yeah. We're biblical scholars, not, yeah. math, <laughs> not math scholars. For 15 years. So I, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been doing it for a long time. You know, even when I went to uh, um, uh, Bible college, I did it there. You know, everywhere, yeah. you know, I, I've just always done it. Yeah. And I've quit, you know, from time to time, whatnot. And then when we started doing this, I, I just told myself I'm putting it down. I'm not going to pick it back up. And that was it. Well, then I got into chewing fake, right? I've showed you guys <laughs> yeah. like some herbal, yeah. like I, I was Tea buying stuff. mint, yeah. peach, cherry, yeah. like there was all kinds of stuff that I was buying. And just to fill the gap of that habitual thing that yeah. I had in my lip, you know, yeah. the spitting and stuff like that. And I, I think I've been three weeks without that. But um, uh, since our first episode, I think that's what. Man. Uh, three months almost. So you've been so completely. Thir- 13 yeah. weeks. Yeah. And, I, and I didn't have, like, usually, I, I like, because I have quit before, usually I go through things where I'm very uh, irritable, Irritable. Mm. you know. Yeah. And, and I'm already kind of an irritable guy. Yeah. In a sense, you know. I, I'm getting better. Yeah, I didn't want to agree to that because yeah. I get scared but, sometimes. I yeah. will. But uh, uh, I do got new blood pressure pills, so I'm a lot better. <laughs> 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 but, uh that has been a big change in my life. For one, I'm not paying uh, 15 to 20 dollars a day on shoe, you know, because I ran through yeah. it like a train. So, um, were you uh, were you having some spiritual convictions about the dipping thing, or was it just something that you didn't feel like it was like, um, you know what I mean? Were you having some spiritual convictions about it? Is that what allowed you to to kind of step away from it, or I just, I mean, I because I mean, I, I guess, I me mean, personally, I don't think it's you know not something that so there's a scripture, there's a scripture that's, uh, I can't remember where it's at, but it says obey the laws of the land, right? Mm-hmm. So tobacco, you can't chew. It's legal to chew, yep. right? Um, within the church, kind of frowned upon, right? Is it? Eh, to an extent. I mean, you don't want people out here smoking cigarettes, True. you know? You yeah. Know? So that's frowned upon, but what's the difference between me hiding a, yeah. some chew in my lip, you know? Yeah. But also, you have weed that's legal. Mm-hmm. Now, What's the difference? Why, why do I need that addiction in sure. my lip? Yeah. And you're, you're smoking weed, which, from my understanding, there's no addictive stuff in it. That's from my understanding. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, it, for me, it's an example, and it's 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 it'd be hard for me to yeah. like if you was new in the church, like why do you choose? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And he's maybe he's uh, the Lord speaking to him, saying, "Hey, you need to uh, not smoke any." Uh, weed anymore or yeah. marijuana whatever yeah and then, and then he sees yeah and he sees the chew in my yeah. lip you yeah. know that's good so, point. so there's just a that's a good example of just what, an example yeah. of yeah uh, it's almost a perfect example of what paul's kind of talking about i mean me and nick had talked about this at one point when t- paul's talk paul's talking about uh, i think he's telling timothy or somebody saying you know i mean if you go into somebody's house and they offer you some food go ahead and just eat it don't be a weirdo you know what I mean? don't be yeah. a problem about it yeah but obviously, don't cause anybody else to stumble either. You right. know what I mean? So yep. That was one of those. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's one of those things. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's one of the things that I. Um, it, it was just bugging me for I don't I, dude I can't tell you what it was I just know that I in my head I kept thinking I need to quit. Yeah. I need to quit. Yeah. And there was th- three guys, uh, uh, three guys that I've worked with that was like, man you got to quit bro you got to quit and they just quit. Yeah. So I was like yeah whatever. Like you'll be back on it. I've seen you. Yeah. I'm not. I'm no quitter. You are. You know what I mean? Like that. That's it. Yeah. And then uh, I end up quitting. So it's just, dude. It's been a lot better. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm not split spitting blood every day. You yeah. Because it's eating my gums yeah. up. So. But you're kind of over the hump now, aren't you? Oh yeah. yeah. Dude, I was over the hump the first three weeks. The only thing was just having something in my mouth. Yeah. You know, like the. Yep. Just whatever, filling that gap, and now it's like. I remember, so when I was, when I was quitting smoking cigarettes, I remember there was a time when I, like, I wanted to quit, and I was like, I don't think I can. I remember saying that to myself. I was like, I think I need prayer, because I don't think I can quit smoking. Yeah. yeah. And then I, you know, got with y'all's cousin. She was like, yeah, you're going to quit. And I was like, okay, I'm going to quit. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> and it, but I, I mean, she can tell you, I, I still didn't quit for a couple of years when we were dating. Yeah. Finally, it was just like, I had this, like, weird thing. I just dropped everything. 
Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's you can't explain it. It's just mm. like, okay, well, I'm going to quit. And then you yeah. quit, and you're like, I can't believe I just quit. Yeah, and I, started, and I started serving in, at First Baptist at the time, and then... The rest is kind of history, so it got me to this. Yeah. So, Gavin, uh, Gavin, what do you what do you think about all this, Gavin? Ah, oh, Gavin's not here. <laughs> <laughs> that was that uh, was pretty good. Fifteen minutes in, yeah. fifteen minutes, and we didn't even address it. Yeah, Gavin, uh, Gavin is not here. We will not be cutting to him in this episode. He, uh, he and his family are, are on vacation. So yeah, that was really cool. We kept it going for that long. I wonder if someone was watching the screen like, are they gonna cut to Gavin? I wonder where Gavin's at. Yeah, I don't know. Is Gavin going to be on a different shot or something like that? Yeah. Gavin? Gavin? Now I'm kind of thinking we shouldn't address it at all. We should have just, like, kept it going. Nah, Gavin will love it. You know what I mean? Gavin will love it. So. But going into, uh, going into kind of today, we're going to be talking about worship. Forms of worship, how we would identify with worship. Um, colloquially, how we would think about worship, Right? We colloquially might think about worship as, you know, just the collective body of the church singing, right? Right? Just singing, playing, singing songs for Lawrence. But that's not all that there is to worship, is it, Nick? No. That's when you go into it. Oh, that's when you go yeah, okay. that was, that was called a segue, and that was yeah. called a... I softball. Oh, you make that so awkward at times, man. <laughs> well, I could tell when I was saying it. I could tell. I was like, I'm fixing to say this, and he is not ready to jump in. Yeah, was, he was just like, well, listening to me. And I was like, I'm fixing to send it to you. And I sent it to him. He was like, yeah. Been doing this for three months, and he's still scared. <laughs> no, uh, worship, um, worship isn't just uh, – well, let me, let me start with this. There's benefits to worship. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, it, it's – it's a, a time to bring peace in your life, um, especially, you know, uh, that's what I feel when I worship. Mm -hmm. That as I was, uh, I don't know, the Lord just, well, let's put it this way. I, I went to a uh, Slavic church six weeks ago, something like that. You want to give a shout out? The River of Life United. There we go. And uh, Anybody I, there you want to shout out? Philip, I guess. Okay. Um, but I went there, and, and the worship, I, to, to me, you know, because I run the sound here, and I'm not very good at it. Nate will tell you. I'm not very good at the mixing department. You know, I'm pretty new to it. But um, I, I just was listening to the, to the worship, and I was like, man, you know, I, I want to worship. You know, like I, be, it's something that I kind of let fall to the wayside yeah. a little bit, and so I just started worshiping. I went back, and we just like just felt complete, just abandoned to just worship. Mm. Yeah. And ever since then, the Lord was just dealing with me about worship. So I started looking some stuff up, and um, well, let's go. In, let's see, let's ask, ask a question real quick for for those down listening. Like, um, what are good forms of you know, because we th all think of worship as, as, like I said, singing, right? Yeah. Singing and playing. And I understand that we're going to get into, you know, other forms of worship. But, like, let's answer the question of, like, good forms of worship and bad forms of worship. Because I think everything that we're, we sing and say, right, has an effect on our, on our lives, right? So it's yeah. like if I'm, you know, head bumping Metallica. Um, eventually that's going to lead into other things. I want to go into something now that this just came to my mind. So it's like there's this like thing, this like type of study that you can do. Um, I think I think it has to do with like a glass box type of thing, and they put like um, like rice or sugar. I think it's, I think it's sugar. Actually, it's not rice, but they put sugar in it, and they basically uh, they blast uh, music into this into this glass box, right? And, yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's sand. It's like sand or sugar or salt, one of the one of those three, but like grainier type of stuff. But anyway, so they blast like um, music. Oh, Todd Back will be all over this, by the way. But they blast music into this into this box, right? And it makes patterns according to the sounds. The, the it's sound been, waves, yeah. Yeah, the I sound just waves seen that, that the other day. That it, yeah. that it actually makes, um, and like like aggressive like rap music and like rock music and like just music that's not good in general. Right? Well, like, just, I mean, it's chaos in there. Like, there's no pattern, there's no nothing. But yet, you know, they might put on some type of um, orchestral music or or even, like, very good, like, um, houses of worship 
uh, music into that sand and like, it creates these like beautiful patterns and whatnot. And, um, and I think this is something that that the enemy is aware of, right? Because if he can get us, um, you know, singing lyrics that are not good, you know what I mean? So from one hand, it's like if we're pumping in music that's bad, that's not that can't be good for our brain chemistry, right? We see what it does to the sand or the salt or the grains in, in the glass box. But um, And then from the spiritual aspect, you know, if we're listening to to stuff that's, you know, not godly, um, you know, we're... we're we're speaking with our mouth. We're, you know, speaking out there the things that are that are that are not good. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of dangerous stuff with it. You know, and, I, and these these are the kind of things that I w- I wish I would have I would have paid more attention to when I was young. You know what I mean? Because there was a good stretch of you know where I was excuse me all about you know Metallica and everything else like that. Besides like taking the time to like really get into you know good. Yeah. Good Christian music, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I tell it, I, I most definitely can tell a difference in, uh, but just what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, tell a difference in, like, and, 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 I, and, and I don't do it now, but or when I did do it, I could tell a difference in the way I talked, the way mm-hmm. I walked, and the way I presented people, how my attitude was towards people, you know, if they, if they were smarting off something jokingly or whatever, you know. Yeah. You know, if I'm over there sitting, listening to, uh, Carter five or Carter yeah. four, you know, you know, I'm I'm a thug then, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's what I feel like. What's, Car- what's Carter five or four? Little Wayne. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, I just made those. I don't know <laughs> okay. if it was a real album. <laughs> okay, I got what you're saying. I'm, I, yeah, but it was Carter something. <laughs> yeah, you lost me. I was like, oh, okay. But, uh, Is this a jazz guy? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just listening to uh, things like that. So I just, you know, I I could tell the difference. In, yeah. Or I could tell the difference, in, and I know my family could tell the difference. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, and taking it back to like you know, I you know I I don't listen to a ton of music now as it is anyway. But it uh it is kind of interesting the fact that like really all I do listening to if I am to listen to any kind of music is a type of you know praise and worship. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's uh it's kind of cool that kind of you know God kind of directed my heart in that area. Yeah. yeah. That makes a big difference throughout your day too. If yeah. You start off. It doesn't have to be worship music, but into something that's yeah. worshiping uh, Yeshua. Yeah. You know what I mean? And especially song, singing songs and stuff like that, that's been something that's culturally been very important to, you know, the Christian church for, when I say the Christian church, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, modern day Christians and also um, the Israelite community as well. You know, they were always, um, we, we, we have depictions of them singing um Hymns and and, and songs uh, all th- all throughout the uh, the New and the Old Testament. So, yeah. yeah. Where am I going? Yeah, that's you, bro. So yeah, um, I think a bad form of worship is any time that you put yourself uh, as part of as part of what you're. That's good. And, and what you're doing, and it, it was something that I I battled early on in my relationship with the Lord because. Um, I mean, even though I grew up in church, I didn't know how to worship. You know, I think that lens is clean. Yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say, oh, <laughs> You're going to rub the lens out. <laughs> Dad, come on. Um, Sorry. But <laughs> we were thinking the same thing, though. Because it was that one. You didn't it go to the other one. one. <laughs> you went to the same yeah. lens. But, uh, uh, sorry, Nick. You're all right. But. You know, anytime, anytime you allow yourself to be uh, a part—not a part of it, but uh, as part of. Uh, well, uh, anytime you let yourself get in the way of worshiping, mm-hmm. you yeah. you make it about yourself. Uh, you know, um, well, Lord, I hope you're going to bless me for mm. for you know worshiping in front of all these people, yeah. or, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, and I, I'm, I I used to get really shy about it, you know. Um, get you know really nervous about you know do I lift my hands up you know oh, who's yeah. watching you know yeah. just kind of looking around um, and you know afterwards you know when you start to like I said you just abandon yourself and just let yourself worship I mean it's just natural yeah you know it comes natural and I think everybody worships a little different you know and um 
one thing I did like and I had written down was um, in Isaiah twenty nine thirteen. It says, "The Lord says, these people come near or come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far, are far from me. Mm -hmm. The worship of me is based on merely human rules. They have are based on merely human rules that they have been taught. And you know, um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with lifting your hands." At worship in the Lord, you know, in, in, in a worship service setting. There's nothing wrong with that. But it, it, nowhere in the scriptures does it say that you have to do that. Yeah. And and I'm not against it. I'm not yeah. saying that. And it may come off like that, but I'm not against it. But sometimes, uh, I mean, I don't raise my hands. Mm -hmm. But I still feel that peace. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's 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 not about what you're doing yeah. Outwardly, it's what you're doing inwardly. Yeah, that's it. There's that, no curriculum yeah. in the Bible that says you have to yeah. worship me this, yeah, yeah. this, except for obeying Him. You know, obeying Absolutely. Him is a form of worship. But that, yeah, and, uh, but outside. we're gonna get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. As, 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 yeah. Aside from uh, whatever, throwing a flag yeah. or doing some painting or whatever, right? You know, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, however yeah. you worship. That's how. No, you brought up a good point of like um, of when we're worshiping to not make it about ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I always. So, I, I get self-conscious, oh, yeah. contrary to, to popular belief. Like, I, I am self-aware that, you know I mean, that, you know I mean, like, I have a tendency to be a little on the, you know, non-cool side of things. I didn't, I didn't know really where I was trying to go with that, but my point was, is like... He's oh, a nerd. I, I, He's I, a nerd. I, I, yeah. My point was, is like, sometimes when I'm like, if I'm up there playing and singing, I'm like, I'm like man, are they going to think I sound good? And I always have to just remind myself, I'm like, look, it's... It has nothing to do with me or my performance. What I what I'm doing is I it is me and my guitar and my voice and it is just we're just, it's just yep. me and, and God and we're just singing. But I, you brought up a good point. Like when we remove ourselves from it, like, and I kind of want to circle, just hit on it one more time that like most um, most music and especially secular music out there, um, kind of has to deal with the promotion of yourself. Yeah. And now we've talked about this on in the pagan worships and, um, and even in the perse persecution acts. So that like, um, the promotion of self is, is like, is not good. That's the beginning yeah. really of, is kind of like, so it's really he heavy in our culture. Now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Worship self. It's all about you. You need no one else. It's yeah. all about you, you know, to the point where they, they're, you know, they do these things to even divide the family. You know what I mean? In a sense, like, you know, uh, promote, singleness and that's you know it's it was never designed to be like that you know that goes all the way back to the garden but um but you know good worship and collective worship is is a really good form of our uh, collective singing i guess is yeah. my point and singing and singing good songs you know good um good lyrics that are you know taken from scripture is is only edifying is yeah. you know to the body and, and to the soul you know what i mean yeah. like you were saying like you know there's a there's an obvious difference from when we're you know you might sing you, know, you might be listening to Carter Three, and then, you know, I mean, versus like, you know, listen to Sukkot Kaim's worship on Saturday mornings. Yep. A huge difference in you know those two, those two things attitude wise. And there's got there's obviously something to that. You know, what I mean, there's obviously something to that. You know, so yeah, encouragement. But, and I, I listen to an, uh, a worship leader. Um, he I don't really know if he's really a worship leader. I think he just writes and and goes and sings. Um, he was with Jesus Culture. His name's uh, Jake Hamilton, and he did a song called "The Anthem." You know which one I'm talking about? Uh, was it? Not, was that the one that was on our Instagram? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah it's on one of our Instagram things. Um, yeah. But I was listening to him, and they asked him, you know, what do you think about today's worship? And he's like, well, you know, everything's commercialized now. Mm. And you know, he's like, I have young people come up to me all the time, like, how do I write a hit song? you know, a hit worship song. And he's like, I just have to walk away, yeah. you know, because that's not what it's about. You know, it's not about writing a hit worship song. It's just about just Praising. writing a song that glorifies the Lord. Yeah. And, and, and I think that goes in with worship as well. I mean, not everybody has, is going to write songs, you mm -hmm. know, but for me, like loving that I, you know, that I, that I like to write, yeah. you know, that is a way for me to worship, yeah. you know, to bring what's in my heart out on, on paper, yeah, and you whether, got some songs. I do, do yeah, you? but I mean, they've been tucked away for a long time. Yeah, um, 
be, uh, that's a long story. You gonna bring one out on the podcast sometime? No. Why not? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I, I'm thinking about giving them to the worship team here and yeah, absolutely. letting them, yeah. or wherever, whoever. I don't care, but yeah. Um, that's a wonderful form of worship. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you were saying, like even writing songs, like you were mm-hmm. saying. Yeah. And you know, I, I mean, I, I just think. When we worship the Lord, you know, we have to do it with our heart Mm -hmm. and uh, because it's an intimate moment, you know, um, uh, I had something I just thought it says your heart must be engaged when you worship Mm. or when you worship the Lord. Yeah. You know, if 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 you're just worshiping, you know, with your head, your head can get in the way sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, when you worship with your heart, you know, the, the, you know, I think we said it at a couple episodes ago where in scripture it says uh the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing Mm -hmm. you know when you start to worship with you know our heart yeah you know that's the willing part of us yeah and um i I do want to talk about this real quick uh the physical what happens to you physically and i you may not know this yet i don't know if i told you but i did email you uh something so that we can cite it on the podcast. Okay. Uh, but it, I was. When did you email this? This morning. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have not checked the computer today at all. Yeah, so. but there's a. I have a light phone. I don't have email and stuff. <laughs> there's a neuro neurotransmitter in our brains. Okay. Uh, I can't remember the name of the it. The cerebral cortex. Sure. I think it's close to that. We're pretty close. But there's a neurotransmitter that they did this study on people that worship the Lord, that when they worship, uh, well, when you wake up in the morning, you have three, 300 million brain cells, right? Okay. And uh, when you worship the Lord, those brain cells start to, cre- or your brain starts to create more brain cells. Okay. But um, it actually, it says it can, uh, every morning you wake up with 300 uh million more brain cells when we worship gamma waves are created in our brain that can actually help us feel the presence Mm. of yahweh gamma waves do more than just make us feel better they actually increase our intelligence too yeah you know so i thought that was pretty neat you know that when you know you're not only are you getting physically or spiritually renewed you're getting physically renewed you know and and and, and probably one of the most important muscles that we have you know yeah, in our brain absolutely and um they say it and they said interestingly enough just seven minutes of worship every day will change your brain hmm so you probably need to start worshiping I'm gonna, you, no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> well no i was gonna say like usually i'm listening to some type of podcast and even though it's like uh even though it's most of the time it's preaching i'm gonna now that like literally Mm-hmm. I had the thought like I'm literally for the next at least 90 days I was like doing 90 day stuff yeah I'm always like yeah try it for 90 days so like for the next 90 days I'm gonna like put on some type of worship on my way to work yeah. that's 22 and a half minutes so yeah. we'll see we'll see how it is after that so yeah. I see your 90 day of drinking water didn't go so well thank you for bringing that up okay. appreciate it yep, yep. we'll cut that out no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> no I just needed something I had a headache while ago and so I was like I gotta get some type of sugar but this says they don't have any sugar it's got sugar alcohol which is aspartame no no it's just uh, sugar from alcohol <laughs> no I don't know. oh you were serious when you said sugar alcohol. <laughs> I, I don't alcohol. know what it is yeah alcoholic it's sugar not. sorry for to derail us yeah, but right. no, yeah. you're good, you're good. Um, you know I just here lately you know I've just been trying to trying to worship more and like driving to work mm-hmm. you know I, I got a little bit of a drive so I just throw on my music until six o'clock when Gavin calls me, you know, yeah. and, uh, so call you at six every day. Yeah. Really? Yeah. How about that? Uh, he's usually right at from five fifty eight to six o'clock every Ga- morning. He Gavin calls. always say, Hey, I got a question. I'm like, Gavin, just ask the question. Like it's in the text and just ask the question. Yeah. But you know, I've just been trying to, trying to worship and, uh, I, it, it's different. To me, when you when you're worshiping with others, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. When you yeah. when you have more than just yourself and alone, I mean I, that that's you know sometimes I prefer being alone worshiping anyways. Yeah. yeah. But there's something about being and uh, worshiping in a service where you're all or you know majority are all worshiping, yeah. you know, yeah. in the same manner. You yeah. know what I mean? And 
and that that's kind of why I, uh, I've been enjoying going up to that mm-hmm. service. Yeah. You know, being able to worship with people my own age. Yeah, you know, it probably I mean? it probably also helps that you're you're not having to. You can just kind of focus on the worship. Yeah. And I'm gonna ask you a question here in just a second, Nate. To that, but I, I assume that kind of helps like the distraction of like having to run a board or yeah, you know, what I mean stuff like that. But like Nate, do you uh, do you think that sometimes it's a you know, and you know you're quite a bit better musician than I am, so it's, it might be different for you. But I I would always it's always sometimes I like I have to remind myself to um, be in, like in the moment and like really worship when I'm like playing or or like playing the drums, playing the guitar, or playing the drums because it's like I'm sometimes like focused on hitting all the licks or something like that or like you know not missing the chord but like do you find that it's sometimes difficult for you because you're worried about playing or is it all just kind of like you're able to just kind of like be in the zone and just kind of worship like that um it's sometimes difficult for me well it's a lot of it's like 50 50 yeah because there's times where i'm like man i wish somebody else was here Mm. that way i can be out there mm-hmm. you know yeah I, I, like because uh, not that it feels like um that uh, being on the worst team is a job but in a sense it is mm-hmm. you know you're, you're the worship team is to usher in the presence yep. you know for, for 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 the whole congregation yeah right so uh for me sometimes i just want to be a part of that yeah not be in it mm-hmm. does that make sense yep absolutely you know I mean? yeah um yeah, because it is kind of relieving sometimes to just kind of like get a break and yeah, and just yeah. kind of enjoy it. Like, it could, like when I was saying to you, you know, you don't have a job to worry about, or like you know, yeah. turning this up or you know, hitting this tom or anything. You just kind of get to sit in the presence of it, and yeah. I imagine that's what a lot of our worship's going to be like when we when we do get to heaven. Yeah. But, you know, there's not because you know. uh, me and Nick actually have a friend. Uh, his name's uh, Zach, and uh, he's a drummer very talented drummer right yeah. and uh I, i've seen him at times uh not be behind the toms you know mm-hmm. what i mean and you can tell there's a different worship mm. in his when he there's there's a difference you know yeah when, when he's up there playing he's worshiping but when he's out here there's a different worship that he's giving. Sure. Yeah. He, he's yeah. receiving and he's giving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've seen that in his life, and I feel like in my own life, mm. I'd feel the same way, you know, yeah. if I didn't have to play the drums every yeah. week. Yeah. Now, I, I, I'll go even kind of on the opposite end of that. I know that even a lot of times it's it's hard for me to worship. I've, I've always been this way. I've mm-hmm. always kind of like, all right, let's just get to the preaching kind uh, uh, of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, so, and I think maybe that's God gave me like a little bit of musical talent. Because I because I'm like that. Like at least if I'm, because you know I I have to be engaged at that point. I have to be like focused on him, like when I'm playing and uh, playing the guitar or singing or something like that. Because usually if not, if like I'm not if I don't have to or if I don't force myself to play, like I'll kind of just kind of like I feel myself every once in a while like kind of checking out of worship because of that. You know what I mean? Really? But that's a, that's a me thing. You know? Yeah. That's a, that's a yeah. That's uh, people like that. They usually you know not following the Lord as much. <laughs> <laughs> But I remember, I remember going up for prayer one time, and like, and being like, uh, "There's this revival that came." I mean, at least I'd been dating mm-hmm. not too long. This might have been like, I mean, you were pre- you preached sometime in that little window, but like, this me? Was, yeah, yeah, this is a long time ago. I remember we had like Brother Bulls come down, uh, Brother Wayne come down, and then like you came down, and then this other guy came down from like South Dakota. But anyway, there was I don't remember you. There was like there. a window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was a that was a revival. When you were there? Yeah, that was like five days straight. That was like Monday through Friday, I think. I just went one night when you were preaching. That sounds about right. Yeah. What do you mean that sounds about right? <laughs> you kidding. didn't go for five days straight, did you? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. For real? He did? I don't even know what you're talking about. I probably wasn't there. I probably wasn't. I just remember Nick was like styling. You know what I mean? Like Nick has like a style. Yeah, he's always styling. It, it, it's never just like t-shirt and jeans. Nah. No. It's nah. like a, and I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the only thing I remember. You talked about Paul. That's when I could fit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fit those clothes. Anyway, oh yeah. So what I was getting at is I remember like uh, this evangelist. He was like kind of like he's like I feel like someone needs a heart, and I was like he must be talking about me because I need a heart. And I told him I was like I need a heart of worship, and he kind of like chuckled. Like I was like, why did you chuckle at that for? But yeah, I've always kind of struggled with with that. Yeah. yeah, I remember when I went to uh, Bible college that uh, uh, I had. Uh, 
basically the day I the day I oh yeah went to okay. Bible college, right? My mom had to come. My mom had to blow my phone up because I was just coming out of drunkenness, you know. <laughs> and they could still, you know. I mean, I I partied hard for like three weeks straight before I went to Bible college. <laughs> I mean, I did, you know, and because um, uh, I knew that the, for so, I I thought something funny like I I knew there was going to be a change, <laughs> right? So I it, it's weird, it's a weird thought, but it's uh, so before so when I went there, um, my hand was all wrapped up because I had you know yep some circumstances sure. and then and then uh, I remember when going in there, I was just sitting there. And they're like, we're going to pray for all the new students here, right? And we're going to pray for the other students or for everybody, basically. So I go in there, and I remember it was actually Zach's dad who was talking about, you know. I'm just sitting there, and my hands are just like this because, you know, I'm a tough guy. You know, really, I was full of pills still yet, you know. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there, and um, he says, lift your hands up. And I, I, and I, I, from my understanding, I don't remember lifting them up. He yeah. said, get your hands up. And he just threw my hands up, you know, and I was like, okay. Right, you know, this is a little different. You know, nobody's ever done me like that. So, <laughs> on down the line, during uh, during the, the the college, we we would do um, chapel, and so my whole career at Life Tabernacle, I was always doing something on stage. Yeah, right. Even if I wasn't good, I was still doing something because we're old school Southern. Uh, churches, everybody can play an instrument, everybody can sing a song, yeah. even if you can't do it, you know, if you can if you can do some spoons, come on up here, we'll give you a microphone, you know. Yeah. So um in doing that, when we was going to chapel, I didn't know what to do. I was used to being up on stage. I had no idea. Mm, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I just sit there and we would always have the lights dim or they was either dark or wherever we would just be listening to music, you know. So on and on and on it goes. I was watching a couple of the friends, man. They was just like diving into worship, you know. I'm like, dude, this is you totally know, different world. It was a different, yeah, you know, yeah. It was totally different. You know, it was a change for me. And uh, when I when I just kept listening, I kept. I was reading, studying, doing everything that they asked me to do, you know, to an extent, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I was doing good. Let me say that, you know, yeah. even after what I come out of. A day before yeah. I went to school, I never did anything else. You know, I always stayed true to that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, going into that, going into worship, my worship changed. You know, my worship yep. changed to, okay, she's over to reading the Bible. And she's uh, uh, on her knees praying, right? This girl over here, she's just laid out, you know. And, like, it, there's there wasn't very many of us. But they was just worshiping, you know. Mm -hmm. So, in my mind, you know, I, I, okay, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to stand up in the front. You know, this is my mind. And I remember one of the first times I really dove into it. And I just, like, like meditating, like, Lord, you're going to have to show me how to yeah, do yeah. this, right? I yeah. mean, like, if there's if there's something that I need to do to show that I love you more mm -hmm. now than I ever have in my life, worship-wise, I need you to show me that. Yeah. So, to me, this is crazy, right? In my mind, I, I remember it as if it was yesterday, okay? The lights are off. I remember, um, I think it was Kim Walker. It was called, uh, the song was called Show Me Your Glory. And uh, it's talking about when Moses went up to the mountain and mm -hmm. he's asking yep. Yahweh, you know, show me your glory. Yep. You know, and <clears throat> so I'm sitting there and, man, all I remember is just swaying. I don't even remember lifting up my hands. I remember my eyes, my eyes are closed. And all I remember is just swaying, you know, basically just swaying to the beat. Just, you know, thanking the Lord, Lord, I thank you for everything you've done in my life, whatever. And all of a sudden, it was just like a vision in my head. And, I, and I've had a few visions. You can ask Nick. I've had, before I went to college, I've had a vision that I was going to hell because I was so stoned out of my mind, you know. <laughs> this is legit, dude. But, like. That was what him and that teacher was praying for me. I'm still mad about that because, like, it tripped me out. But anyways, I had a vision that uh, I, as I'm sitting there swaying, I, I'm just, like, meditating, you know, like I said. And something, I could see something. And, 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 I, and like I said, I can't tell you. Uh, it still kind of gets to me emotionally. But uh, it, it looks like a throne. But I can't see who's sitting on it. But I know somebody's sitting on it. Yeah. 
and I and I knew that in 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 that moment, in, in that time in my life, that my worship was only to Him. Mm. There's only an audience of one. Yeah. Right. That yeah, yeah. Brian preaches that. There's only an audience of one. Don't care about anybody else. I don't need the lights dim. I don't need the lights turned off. You can put a thousand people in here. It doesn't matter. I only have one person that I'm worshiping. That's good. He's the only person that in my life that it deserves that. Yeah. You know? So in that time that I seen that vision, I knew, I knew it. Nothing else mattered. Yeah. But just my, just letting go of everything in that moment. It doesn't, I don't have to be over there praying like they're praying. I don't have to be over there worshiping yeah. like the, you know, because my audience is one. And That's good. Yeah. So they're not, like I said, dude, this is, this is what, this is what threw me off in that vision. I can see it, but I can't, I can't see it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting there swaying and I remember just opening up my eyes like, like uh, like a movie, you know, when you're blinking your eyes, you know, and they finally start opening. That's how it felt, right? Yeah. And I look up and I'm like, maybe this is a coincidence. I don't know if this is a coincidence or not, but uh, the church was north and south stage, kind of kind of like this uh, building here. Yep. It's north and south, right? And, and and when I woke up, that I was facing east, and I was like. That's crazy. Because you don't remember turning. Or I don't remember turning. All I remember is just swaying. Just, you know, just as a musician or as anybody that can keep beat, don't have to play a musician. You, you just, you know, you're feeling the rhythm. You, you know, yeah. you're just you're just trying to get in the zone there. And when I open up my eyes, that, 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 that was wild to me. I was like, okay, this vision showed me something mm. that I've never seen before in my life, right? And for some reason in scripture, it says that you're going to see him arise in the east. Mm, that's good. That's cool. So in, in, in my worship, he was showing me that what what I've been reading, what I've been taught is real. So, yeah. you know, in my worship, my worship started changing. Yeah. Then, you know, I didn't have to do everything. Did I start doing some things that everybody else did? Yeah, I started lifting up my hands. I started praying out loud, you know. Yeah. Um, I wish I knew how to uh do a little jig, you know, do some dancing, but you know, that's, yeah, you know, do a little jig. Is that what you call it? Yeah. But (laughs) is that slang for dance? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But at the end of the day, you know, uh, the Lord was showing me, you know, like pastor Brian was saying that there's only an audience. Yeah. It was kind of some confidence that he was sending your way. Wouldn't it? Like that. And uh, dude, I, I honestly just think that he was just showing me that, uh, even, even coming in from, from a couple hours of you know being sober uh to bible college and then uh, you know a month down the road he was still showing me that i kept you at 18 years old you know when i was shot yeah now i'm i'm moving you to a different direction now you know my life's been a mess since bible college you know it's been a mess since then but still yet still to this day i still like i was talking to gavin gavin i was talking to gavin about this gavin and uh, I told Gavin, I said, man, I, I, I love that even in my own mind, I don't remember some of the stuff I did in my mm. childhood, but I can remember it almost every time the Lord touched me. Yeah. Every time he showed me something. Every time. And in, 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 during worship, during altar call, whatever it may be, he was showing me that he was still God. That's and a, he still shows me. That's that. a good point. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. I didn't yeah. even think about that until you brought that up just now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord, you know, the uh, worship is, 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 it's different, man. It's different. It's different for everybody. It's mm-hmm. different. You know, um, you, you can do, if you're honoring the Lord, right, biblically, yeah. you know, not doctrinally, right, <laughs> you, you know, not curriculumly, but what the word says, you know, yeah. you worship Yahweh, then, then you're on the right track of of moving forward in your life because yeah. there's all kinds of forms of worship. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. But that, yeah, the, dude, I could tell you all kinds of stuff and Nick can probably tell you too, you know, that, uh, some of the stories just, just that where the Lord would show, show me things, even dear worship. I'll, I'll tell you another one and, and, and I'll digress. I'll tell you two of them and I'll digress. S- same place yep. or, uh, with the same people, uh, same church. Um, uh, I, I remember um, I was in worship, right? I was one of the uh, leaders in the church, and uh, or sorry, one of the leaders at the church camp. Yeah, yeah. 
and uh is this church camp still will yeah oh really okay. yeah and I, I was sitting there shout out just, kevin bogle <laughs> just just worshiping. he was gonna watch us by the way that's why i said that oh really? yeah he i was just sitting there just worshiping you know actually kevin vogel was the worship leader at the time you there know you doing that so but we was doing that and uh I remember. I just remember looking at this this guy, and I love this dude to death. And uh, he was a young young man, and uh, I don't know what what it was. You know, during my worship, I just felt the Lord say, "Pray for him." When I started praying for him, I started saying stuff to him. I ain't gonna tell you what I said to him. Sure. But um, a few years down the line, he's like, "Dude, that you know, you you don't know what mm. the Lord was showing me, and He yeah. told me through you." Yeah, you know, so everything started, you know, and that a little bit prophesying. Uh, sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't really understand. Yeah, yeah, but uh, <laughs> uh, but just you know, just allowing the Lord to to use you during the time of that that uh, intimacy with mm -hmm. Him. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, on down the road, right? Same place, different time, different yep. time frame in my life. Yep. Different uh, area of my life um, that involved that same place, same time. I already said that. But, um, <laughs> uh, we was uh, I was sitting there, and I remember this dude, man. I, I was just in worship, and it felt like, like you said, man, you couldn't push through, you couldn't break through. It was just like, um, what am I doing here? You mm. know, I need to go sit back down. Like, yeah, because it just didn't feel like I was going anywhere with my worship, you know, and. Uh, I remember this guy, he come and prayed for me, you know, give it up, you know, let go. And I was like, I thought I, that's what I am doing, you know? Yeah. And I, and I didn't know, you know, I, I'm just, you know, like I said, the same thing, you know, just listening, hands behind my back or whatever, you know, and I'm just swaying, you know, and I hear that guy praying for me. I'm like, man, dude, <laughs> you know, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Because I felt like that's where I, that's what I was doing. Yeah. And uh, I remember uh, this guy coming and got, got me. He said, hey, uh, Nate's going to come with me. Um, I'm going to trade you out, right? Because when we're at this camp, uh, I don't know if it's a rule, but it's, you know, it's it's better to have two yeah. witnesses than yep. one going back with the camper or whatever. Yep. And there was a young man, uh, if he listens to this, he knows who he's talking to or who, who I'm talking about, but he uh, – he went back there, and he was going through some things that me and Nick had gone through. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> he was going through some things, tough, you know. And the, 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 uh, the leader that took him out there, that, uh, that morning service he had talked about, he's like, I get angry, right? I get angry. I can't do nothing about it. If somebody makes me mad, you know, or if I'm just mad, I can't just go bust somebody up, you yeah. know. He said, what I like to do is I like to roll up a towel and I'll just hit it on the floor, you know, and just get after it, you know, just letting that frustration out because that's the only way I know how to not sin. Yeah. You know, without, you know, I don't want to sin, so yeah. this is what I do. So we go back into this, uh, into the uh, boys' dorm, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you walk in, there's like a little, gathering plate or what do you, what do you call it? A lobby? A lobby, yeah. A mezzanine? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it, we Come go on, in hit there. me with one. Hit me with one. I ain't got nothing. It's hey. like a French word. What? Lobby, mezzanine, there's another one for it. Ah. Like a... Foyer? Yeah. A foyer. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, that's what it was. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, we go in there and he tells, uh, he, he tells the young man, he says, hey, uh, Go grab a towel. Go grab a towel. Nate, you know, you're here as a witness. You know, I can't remember what he said, but I'm. All, this is where it gets crazy, dude. So he's sitting there talking to Nate or talking to uh, this young man. Sorry, not Nate. But he's sitting there talking to him, and he's just telling he tell him, look, I, you know, we're, we're praying for you. You know, we, we know what you're going through. Um, we, we've been through that. We've seen that in other young men's lives. We can see that it's changing, you mm -hmm. know. Um, you need a breakthrough. Um, so whenever you're ready, let your anger out, you know. Yep. So we're sitting there, and uh, uh, it's tough to talk about because it, it was real, dude. Yeah. And uh, we're sitting there, and 
I just remember looking at, uh, I remember looking at Barry, mm -hmm. like, what am I doing here, you know? Because I, you know, I, like, the, the, the guy that, uh, the young man was a good, a good friend of me and Nick's, a lot younger than us, you know, mm -hmm. but he clicked with us. So, um, uh, he was somebody that I knew. He's somebody that yeah. I kind of hung out with, you know. Confidant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, I, and I knew what he was going through, but I just didn't know, like, to what extent, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm just kind of like with Barry, just, okay, you know, because we was waiting on the young man. Yeah. To let his frustration out. And I'm just sitting there, and all I can remember is hearing that sound. Boom. And, dude, he goes to town on that floor. Because, like I said, he was going through stuff that, you know, I, I don't want to talk about. Sure. But it was personal for him. Yeah. And it was eating him up, mm -hmm. you know, as, as much as I can say. And I just remember him, because, uh, like I said, we was pulled out of worship. And uh, we was pulled out of worship during the evening to go do this, right? Yeah. And all I remember is the young man started swinging. And he just lay on the ground, bawling, right? Yeah. The, what does Brian say? True worship is to prostrate yourself, to yeah. show, to show your weak parts, to show your weakest parts. Yeah. Because he is the king, so you're you're worshiping somebody, and, and that's how. I, now that I know that, I seen him do that, and I'm telling you, dude, I felt so drunk. <laughs> I felt so like like and I and I can't I don't want to say it like that but I just felt like what was over me and him mm -hmm. what he was going through broke both of ours yeah so and I'm sitting there dude and I'm just like whoa bawling my eyes out because I didn't know I told Barry, and I told Barry I said Barry how did you know yeah like how did you know I needed that I haven't talked to you about nothing. Yeah. You know, I I thought I was okay, you mm -hmm. know, until this evening. Yeah. And when when that when we broke free of that, our worship began to further in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, like we couldn't control what you, you can't, when the spirit comes upon you, you can't control. Yeah. You know, and I, I was arguing with uh, uh, with mom Friday. And I debated with, you know, my my dad, Brian. Yeah. How does that go? Uh, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Because um, if you don't know uh, more than uh, 30 scriptures, then you're, you're about, you know, yeah. you're done for. Yeah. Does Brian yeah. appreciate it, though? Does he appreciate a good debate against him? I, I don't want to say it was a debate because. Uh, I quest questions. Yeah, my questions. Yes, yeah. my questions. And uh, he. Uh, he loves it, and he yeah. loves it because he's teaching. Mm -hmm. And and it, it boils down to this: I'm going to tell you what I know, but you're going to have to search it out yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, and the debate was over. Um, uh, the speaking in tongues, sure, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what it was over, or yeah. the, the questions was over the speaking in tongues. Was and, that from our podcast? Yeah, yeah. 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 So I was. I, anyways, I was questioning that and. Asking stuff about that and uh, and saying all that, you know, um, when like the only the only thing that I've come out of of what we talked about about the tongues and, and I'm, I'm I'm gonna get back to sure. the worship, but uh, the the talking in the tongues thing. The only thing that uh, because I I can argue with with a a, a wall, you yeah. know, and and they'll argue back, yeah, you know what I mean? Because I continue to argue so. Um, <laughs> Even with uh, talking to mom and Brian, you know, I can, uh, whatever. But it all boiled down to the uh, the spirit, mm -hmm. you know. Um, without the spirit, w w what do we have? Yeah. You know. So, and, and going back to that, when, when I felt like what was keeping me uh, from pursuing the Lord or what, what, whatever was hindering my worship, mm -hmm. right, when that was broke, then the spirit allowed me. That was yeah. This when the spirit come on, you know, overwhelmed me. I couldn't control how I worshipped. Mm -hmm. All I could say was, "Oh my God!" You know, like this is crazy. You know, and even to this day, uh, 
when I talk to that young man, you know, he's, 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 he's a man now. Yeah. Uh, he'll say, you remember that time? And he, he'll tell me, he's like, dude, it still, you know, it still chokes me up. Because yeah. we both felt that same, yeah. that same overwhelming presence. Even when we couldn't worship, yeah. he broke that, you know, for yeah. our worship so that we could. And he- I see, uh, I see walk. Does he seek after God? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Absolutely. So that was a that was a moment in his life. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. that was him as a young man. Now he's a man with yeah a, a wife and kid now. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so um, yeah, that was yeah that that those ex, that those experiences that I've talked about. Like I said, I'll never forget. And there's been there's been multiple more, or there's been several more. You know, mm-hmm. but um, those two really ring a bell to me because I I. I I've always felt the Lord in a sense, you know, and and I've always believed him to be true. But those couple of times, um, I can't I can't get out of my head. Sure, yeah. you know what I mean. It, I I can read this. I can read uh, Hebrews chapter one from now to the day I die, and I still won't remember everything in it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. But I remember those times that he's. Uh, make himself uh, real. Made himself yeah. real in my life during worship. Yeah. You know, during that pursuing, you know, even when I felt like it wasn't there, like you said, it's hard sometimes yeah. to push through. It's hard sometimes to do it. And um, I don't know how, I don't know what I was doing. You know, I, w- I wish during those times that you're talking about, I could say, Lord, you remember that time? You know, you did that. Can you do it right now? You <laughs> yeah. know, yeah. but, you know, that's just, that's just what the Lord does. You know, He gets you in. Yeah. Um, you least expect it and when you need it. When yeah, you absolutely. Most need it. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Did Did you guys re- like really enjoy church camps, like as as leaders and as as students and stuff like that? Because I know I did. Like I knew that it was. I was, you know, I hear a lot of people. Not a lot of people, but some people say that they don't like when. You know, kids are getting saved at church camp and only getting saved at church camp and they come back for two weeks and they're on fire and then that goes away. But it's like, man, it really is a, a awesome place for your heart to be so, because your heart's so tender and so like on edge and like ready for the Lord to do something. You know what I mean? It's just, I always tell, I always told my family, I was like, I just, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to come home. I'll be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't want to come home because it's like in that, in that place, it was like, it's like it's it's truly like God gives us a, a small glimpse of heaven. Now, like, don't get me wrong. Some people like don't like the idea of Falls Creek and everything like that. But man, and that's where I, I went most of my life. I went to some summit camps too, but like, you know, it was Falls Creek. But I always felt like my heart was so like, I'm like I was so engaged and so focused on like, you know, praising the Lord that you know it it was always just there was always just like such good moments like in my life. Did y'all like kind of experience the same things, or was it like? I mean, did you? Were you always thankful for the church camps, and you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, before we would go, um, I didn't want to go. Have you? Did y'all always go to church camps? Like even from like like and sixth grade, or was it just like a couple years? I remember. See, Nick was Nick I, was going I, to junior camp, and I was, I wasn't. Uh, I was in kids, kids camp, camp. So but I was only there one year. Yeah, so fairly young. Yes. Yeah. So what are you eight, eight? I think I nine think and uh, ten, something like that. No, we weren't that young. Um, uh, I think I was. No, 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 no. Okay, so I did. Me and Nate did one year of junior camp together, and then I Nate was still in junior camp. I was in senior camp. Yeah. For one oh, year before Nate senior. come up to senior camp. That's what it was. Oh. Kids. Yeah, kids, but Evelyn just now got into kids camp. Yeah, she that's where they she just went for a week. So yeah, yeah, oh, up at Stillwell. Yeah, yeah. Was it? yeah, yeah. I told I told uh, Lisa I was like when you you need to go. Well, so when when Isla gets like, well, I want to take Roddy when he's like five or six or whatever. We're just trying to wait for an area where we can like give command. He follows command fairly. Yeah, well, you, know you guys I mean? don't use leather, huh? You guys don't. We use don't leather. use leather. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. That's well, so it's like right now it's like, well now we're gonna get into it. We're gonna, let's just. Get I into mean, it. We, I mean, I thought the West family had their own leather brand. 
<laughs> you know what I- Listen, I got whooped. Lisa got whooped, and I and I do agree that like there's probably there. Hopefully not, but there's probably going to be a time where that type of punishment is needed. But we just don't feel like it's there yet because he wouldn't understand. All he would understand is like that hurt. That hurt. Yeah. And he wouldn't know why it hurt. If that makes sense. Now there is going to be a point where it needs to hurt because he understood why it hurts. If that makes sense, you know. Yeah. But yeah, but uh, when he gets five or six or like that, we're me and Lisa are going to like be sponsors from then on. And I love church camp. Oh I'm yeah, so all about it. Yeah, so church camp. yeah, we'll be the worship team. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, I know people. I mean, I know some vocals. Oh yeah, true. They can all sing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah think about they're that. a whole band. The whole yeah. Band. Well, I was thinking. I was thinking. Um, you know. Yeah. Some wishful thinking. Oh okay. You got what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So back to the church well, camp. I'll start thinking. Okay. Um, yeah. But anyway, I you know that's a that's a vision that I'd like yeah. to do. But anyway, we're gonna be like camp sponsors and yeah. stuff like that. Lisa hasn't fully committed to this, but she's committed to this. If, <laughs> like Roddy's gonna go with me, and if she wants to join, it's fine. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. But I just. Back to the whole thing. I just, I love church camps so much. You know, yeah. I just love them. Because I feel um, like it's like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll go to you, Gavin. Gavin, what do you think about that? What? I, I'm, we'll be right oh, back. I'm waiting on you. Oh, I didn't want to interrupt you anymore. I was just going to say, you know, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. So here's what I was going <laughs> to ask you. I totally agree. Um, we're cutting that. From for church camp for me was I I always wanted to go but I didn't want to go, um, and one of the factors for me was I got to play basketball all week. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, but it always become not about basketball, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because I was rebellious and stubborn and yeah. uh, very competitive. So you know, being playing basketball was like I'm coming here. To dominate. To dominate. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and like Nate, you know, the experiences he had or shared with us, you know, uh, some of my biggest experiences were at that church camp. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, knowing that I was going to be, that I would, I would preach, you know, uh, that's where that was revealed to me was at church mm-hmm. camp. And I could, I could take you right back to the spot. And it was actually Barry who was praying with me. Oh, that's cool. And yeah. it actually, me and Barry share the same birthday. Cool. And uh, which is uh, June 29th. Yeah. And um, nailed it. But you know, the the church camp was was big was was vital for for us. And you know that's how we went to that Bible college was through that church camp. Okay. You know, the, you know, having that association. Mm-hmm. And. Um, uh, I mean, it was just, it, it was vital for us yeah. and it changed our lives, even though, um, you know, we would go home and, and be on fire for the Lord. And then all of a sudden, you know, yeah. something would happen and you, you, you're just like, well, I done messed up. So I might as well just yeah. forget about it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, which would, you know, I mean, it's just, I was a kid, so it was a, uh, an immature, an immature mentality. Yeah. And, but learning how to worship. Um, I guess you know, with imba- abandon was was watching Barry, mm-hmm. honestly, um, and I love Barry to death. You know, he's he's a good dude. Um, Since he, we're on it, who who is Barry to the church camp? Was he just a random? He he's a he's a or? yeah he's a pastor okay. in. Um, but would he just always yeah. just go as a as a? Yeah. Guy he would sponsor? take his he would take his youth group up there. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, and he was a good ball player too, and actually. Golfer. Yeah, he's a very good golfer. Really? Where's yeah. he from? L- I think Lead Hill, Arkansas. Yeah. Yep. And that's a pretty specific place for you to be like. I well, I couldn't remember Led if it was Hill? I couldn't remember if it was Lead Hill or uh, Berryville. There, there, there's yeah, there's several, there's several Arkansas, Arkansas churches. churches. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. And Barry, hit us up. We'll yeah. go play sometime. Yeah. Yeah, we need to. And actually, um, there was one night I went to go preach at Barry's church, and. Um, Went all the way over there from Bartlesville because I was at that Bible college and went all the way up to Bar- uh, Barry's church and I stayed with them that night. And, uh, dude, uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I was sick. Oh. I mean sick. And I, I got up 
and was going to use the restroom. And uh, Barry's sitting there watching TV, and he's like, what's going on? I sat down. What was Barry up at 2 o'clock in the morning? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. He was just watching TV, (laughs) but uh, probably watching UFC or something. But uh, he's like, he's like, you're not feeling good, huh? I said, no. He's like, I hope you're ready in the morning. And I was like, all right. You know, and I went, went to the bathroom, went back to bed, woke up, still feeling sick. And uh, went to preach or was sitting there through the worship service. And I was just like, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. And I get up there to preach and boom, it was gone. Really? Yeah. I, I felt uh, like a hundred bucks preaching. As soon as it was over, just I sat back. Usually the expression is a thousand bucks. Uh, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, I, I felt really, you know, I felt really good. And uh, when I sat down, I got sick again. Huh. And I told Barry and he was like. The Lord brought you here to do something, and he was going to bring you through it. Mm. And, uh, you know, so Barry has always been, you know, I may not have uh, a whole lot of communication with him, you know, just life. Yeah. But uh, Barry was always, you know, he, he he was not afraid to take you to the side and just talk to you. Yeah. And it wasn't like you were getting in trouble or anything like that, but it was always just like the Lord was... He, he, I think he, he kind of had a special place for me and Nate mm-hmm. in, in his heart. And, um, you know, he was, he was always good about that, yeah. you know, just, just in, to encourage yeah, us. Yeah, seen two rough Indian boys. He was like, well, you better get them on the right side of the tracks. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but, um, you know, church camp was awesome. Love it. Uh, actually had a, a boy from the church here that just got back, and I asked him, I said, well, how'd your week go, you know, knowing he was at church camp? And he just said, man, it was awesome. And he's like, um, I got I got closer to my brothers talking about his friends, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and and you know, as a young person, that's what you need. Yep. And uh, you know, uh, we feel the the culture, you know, and young people is just kind of pushing like pushing yourself. Yep. And when you do that, you kind of push everybody else away. Yep. You isolate. Yep. Yeah. And and that just leaves room for for the devil to attack you. Yeah, absolutely. And so for me, it was encouraging to hear uh, Yeshua, who's a big big fan of of yep. what we're doing. So it was Yeshua. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I was gonna ask. It yeah, it was Yeshua, and he's you know it was it was encouraging for him. You know yep. that that past week at church camp. So. Yeah. And. Um, you know, just being a part of all that, being a part of, of church camp and worshiping at church camp was, I, I look back at those uh, moments a yeah. lot, yeah, a lot, and a, a lot of things, a lot of breakthrough happened for me at church camp and I, and, and revelation about myself, yeah. you know, so yeah, I, I always enjoyed church camp, I enjoyed dominating, yep. and I enjoyed the Lord dominating me, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But the, I think me and Nate won four or five three-on-three championships in a row. Like who's the third? Who? It didn't matter. You had, <laughs> it didn't matter. You had me and Nate. That's all you needed. I gotta be honest. I didn't know that you could play ball. I've just never put that. Oh together. yeah. Really? Oh, you can fight. You know what I mean? That's well, we don't talk about that. Oh okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I actually had a guy from high school talking about Nate the other. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm talking about Nate playing basketball, and he was like, you know what? Nate was one of the smoothest players I've ever seen play. Really? Oh, yeah, dude. Nate, yeah, just because he's a big dude don't mean that dude can't shoot, that dude Ooh, can't huh? dribble. Yeah. And Can you defend a double leg, though? That's what I'm, no, I couldn't jump at all. I said, could you defend a double leg, though? Could I defend a double leg? Yeah. No. No. You think I can take you down? Yeah. Nate. Uh, seriously. I'm not fast, bro. I'm not. It, now, if you get a guy my size trying to double leg me, you think I, so. You think you take Nick down? You'd get choked out before you got me all down. All right, all right, all right. We're getting a little out of hand here. We're going to cut that. We'll be right back. No. <laughs> I'm not cutting any of this. You know what that's off of, Dr. Uh-uh. Phil? Oh, is it? Yeah. Is that why the two fingers? Yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. All right, so. Oh, uh, uh, I did want to I did want to say, uh, you know, Nate was talking about um, – worshiping at, at Bible college mm-hmm. and uh the I guess you would call her a dean. Would you call her that? Of the college? She like the head of the college? Yeah. Yeah. Um 
Sorry. She would. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ryan woke us up at six today. She would. She. You know. I. I, I wasn't raised like Nate was. Uh, Nate. Nate was. You know. He's very instrumental. I'm not. I. I can't dance. I got no rhythm. You know. Not even Carlton. I can. I could. I could do the Carlton, but if you put music on, I couldn't do it. <laughs> um, but she. She did the opposite with me. She put me on stage singing. Really. Yeah, and I told him, I said, I'll do it, but you better turn that mic all the way down. Can you sing? No. No. I bet you can. Can no. you sing? No. Uh, like, you know, who's that dude off of Green Day? <laughs> who's, that, who's that? Billy Joe? Huh? Billy Joe? Name? I don't know his name. Uh, how, how does he sing? Or what's that one song? Uh, he like, uh, uh how great! Like that. Yeah, that, you know that's that's Nick right there. No, he's not. Oh, he's not. <laughs> I can't see, but um, but yeah, she put me on stage and and I was just playing. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, and, and I wasn't taking it seriously. And there was a night, um, we were worshiping in the youth room for some reason, and she had me on stage singing, and. I had started to take it seriously. Still didn't want to be turned up, but I started to take it seriously for some reason. I don't, I'm not sure why. But she's like, you'll know. Or she said, I'll know when to pull you off. Mm. But you're not coming off until I say. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man. So I started to kind of take it seriously. And uh, um, April was singing uh, Dance With Me. You know that, You know what I'm talking about? That song, Dance With Me, it's, it's real slow. I think it's called Dance With Me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, but she was singing that song, and I just put my mic down and walked off stage and just started worshiping. Yeah. And I never had to go back up on stage. <laughs> but, it would, it, you know, I, I had to get serious about, about that. Yeah. In order, because I felt led to put the mic down and walk off stage and worship. Yeah. So that was... You know, there was a, I had to, had to grow up a little bit, you yeah. know, where not everything is a joke. Right. And, but yeah, you know, I mean, I had, we, we had a lot of good experiences at church camp and worshiping and uh, Bible college. We had, you know, we're still friends with, you know, some of them, you know, some of them we just, yeah, you know, just lose contact. Yeah. Um, but another uh, person who I, I'd like to have on, on the podcast, I've talked to him about it before um chris uh and it was another moment of worship for me was we were sitting in chapel but we were doing it in our classroom and he kind of sat across from me and uh he uh it's been bothering me. he uh when he would read his bible he would just start crying really like sobbing and i, I it started to get on under my skin <laughs> You know, because I'm sitting here trying to read mine, and I like, I just look across, and he just, you know, going like that and stuff. And I was just like, I was like, man, what is this deal? Yeah. You know, and it went on for a couple of weeks, and I was like, I can't take this no more. Like, I'm going to say something to him. And um, and I've shared this with him, and I hope he doesn't mind. Um, if you If you know Chris, or if you ever see me and Chris together, you'll know this is how we talk to each other all the time. Yeah. And uh, but Chris, I don't even know how they're friends. <laughs> Nick's friends with a lot of people like that. Yeah, like, like you guys are friends now. Chill out, you know. <laughs> Hug each other. You, but anyways, go ahead. But he was crying, or you know, he was he was reading his Bible, and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try something. Yeah. You know. So before I said anything, I was going through this one chapel service, and before I got into that chapel service, I was like, Lord, if it's real. I want to feel what he's feeling. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that's all I said. And he sits down, opens up his Bible, five seconds into it, he's bawling like a baby. And I'm like, you sickened me. <laughs> you know, just kind of like, is it, you know, it just, it just infuriated me. And I don't even know, I don't even know what it was that I was going to read. Opened up my Bible, and I'm looking at it, and five seconds into it, I'm just... <laughs> And I was like, I was like, all right, never again, you know, never again. But Chris has a heart of worship, you yeah. know. Chris is, I mean, 
and he's very knowledgeable about about the word. But man, when that guy worships, um, it's different. It's different, yeah. dude. You want to see a man all out? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just uh, there's no fear, you know. As as men, men, you mm-hmm. know, we don't shed tears. We hold them back, you know. Yeah. You see, you may see our eyes water up and get a little red, but he's a man that, like I said, he, he he's looking at. When he worships, in, in my eyes, because you know I, I, I hung out. We, back, Chris actually lived with this for like a year and a half, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, uh, you, you'll see that audience of one. Mm-hmm. That's how you know. Yeah. And that's what that's how he does it, you know. Yeah. So I know what Nick's talking about because, dude, when Chris had to go to work early in the morning. You'd hear him reading his Bible and crying. I'm like, man. Oh yeah, dude. It's yeah. It, 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 it. And honestly, it's it's, all, it's kind of motivating to be Absolutely. like, Absolutely. Like I, I want to feel what you're feeling Absolutely. when you're reading the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes I open it up and I'm just like, yeah. You know. Yeah. And but uh, it, it's different when when you see someone uh, worship like that and and read their scripture like that. It's 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 humbling. Yeah. You know, and Chris, Chris has always been, uh, we've always been able to, to pull and give with each mm-hmm. other. And I think that's why we're so close. Yeah. Um, cause I can, I could probably call him right now and he'd be like, Hey man, what's up? You know, just as goofy as <laughs> ever. I don't know. <laughs> but do, do an impersonation of me. How, how would that go? I, I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> Hey guys! Yeah, see, I was gonna say my boy. He don't always does like a real high. He don't always does a real high pitched voice for, me, <laughs> yeah. for some reason. Uh, no, uh, I I I really am excited to have Chris here. We're just trying to figure out. Well, we're trying to get ourselves on a schedule. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, life has just been been wild and it's crazy. Busy. Yeah, yeah. It's summertime. There's a lot going on. One's married. One's trying to get married. The other's trying to. Yeah, hey, I'm looking. Yeah. Um, I will say, uh, go ahead. Before, you go know, ahead. Um, just for the people down lens, um, we wouldn't be acting like this if Gavin was here. Gavin keeps us in line. Yeah, it's, it's a little different. Yeah. You know, we've getting out of line. He's gonna watch Wait, this. And where be is like, Gavin? <sighs> Gavin. We'll be right back. But we, uh, he, he'll be. You know, <laughs> we do miss Gavin. It's you know, he would have gave us a little more he break. Not that we can't study it, you yeah. know, you know, but I mean, some say we don't know a thing about Hebrew. I seen that, I seen that, I did see that. There's always going to be people that are, are going to be Nick. against us, you know, and which is okay, you know. I mean, I'll cut it out if if nobody, you know, no, no, don't cut that out because I mean, there's always going to be people against us, you know. Yeah. I mean, we can't please everybody. Yeah, I honestly, took it as a badge of honor, to be honest. Yeah, I, you know, uh, they're I, not they're not watching this late. So anyway, so it doesn't really matter. My my flesh, my flesh is like, uh, I want to, uh, I want to say something. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, as soon as I read that, I started playing it out in my head. So I called mom. I said, Hey, see what happened. So I tell mom. I said, You know what? I'm gonna message him. And so what I played out in my head, I said it to mom. Yeah. And then Nick called me later on, and I, and then I went off on Nick. And Nick's like, You're gonna say that? I was like, Nah, I already did that to mom. I just seen what y'all was gonna yeah. say. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was real passive aggressive in my response. Yeah. Too. Well, yeah. Nick was stirring us up, wasn't he? Is what happened? Yeah. Was- well, I, Gavin brought it to my attention. I had no idea. <laughs> Can you imagine Gavin on vacation? Uh, like, ooh. Yeah, Gavin, Gavin we're always, left, left yeah, that phone always, at home. You're always I, making comments and people yeah. Yeah, just disagree, you yeah. know, which is fine. You know, as long as we stay true to the word. And Absolutely. We're, we're, there's times that we may mess up, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not intentional. No. no. Our, our, you know, I feel like our hearts is, they're growing, our, our knowledge is growing, our wisdom, yeah. you know, we're building each other up, and sometimes we don't get our Everything. literature correct. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. You know, so um, it's just, you know, not all of us, but I, I watch that guy's videos, and, uh, <laughs> you know, hopefully <laughs> the Lord blesses you and keeps you and stuff like that, but, yep. uh, yeah. Okay. Lord help me. <laughs> I started thinking about it there for a second. Well, he had to. I'll say this, since I wasn't going to say nothing at all, because at first I shouldn't have brought it up. At That's first, maybe at first I was like, and when I told Aaron, I was like, oh well, I don't care. Yeah. And then I started like I read it again, and I was like, you know what? I'll be honest, real honest with you. I forgot completely about it till just now, though. <laughs> you know, I was just like, you know what? Um yeah, that makes me mad a little bit. 
Yeah. You know, but I thought, you know, he said something about everything we teach it's a lie. is a lie. Yeah. yeah. So you watched every minute. You watched every minute. You had to because you yeah. had to listen to everything we yeah. said. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I was just like, "Thanks for the view. Thank Appreciate you. it." Yeah, yeah. It's watch time, baby. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, you're on the channel, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting our message out. Uh, but you know, I mean, I did start getting fired up, yeah. and, and but then I had to like to take a step back and get get fired up. And to be honest, differently, the word's supposed to offend. What we're doing is supposed to offend, and so mm. it's kind of it's kind of comforting that you know at only twelve. You know, twelve episodes in, we we have, you know, reached that point where it's like it's most likely what's happening is that, you know, Holy Spirit's putting pressure on traditions and beliefs and things like that, and so he had no choice but to yeah right but to spill out yeah yeah he I guess it's a he I don't, I don't know anything about it well uh, what scripture was that I think it was in uh, um. Was it Romans 10? Provoking the jealous. I think it was Romans 10. Uh, Brian brought it out today. That, Let's turn to it. Um, um, that uh, I, I think the scripture goes like this. I don't have my phone, so I can't really look it up as quick as... Um, Gavin. But I, I believe it's in Romans 10 that it says that... Uh, um, it, um, Basically, it says the um, the Jews and the Greeks, meaning the Jews and the Gentiles, right? We all serve the same master, right? We we all serve the same master. Meaning, um, if if we're going by what the Word says, right, and, and we accept Yeshua for what He says in the Word, what He says in the Torah, what what this all the scripture says when we accept him he's the same as he was in the beginning of time mm -hmm. yeah six seven thousand years ago you know so uh when people come against you and say well you're not preaching the truth well you're not saying anything like this um your yeshua is not different than my yeshua mm. you may think it is right you may read some other stuff or whatever but as far as i know there's one commandment it's to obey Mm -hmm. Right. If you love him, you obey my commandments. Yeah. And that's like it, you can't go outside of that and try to find something different. Like um, if you want to be more Jew or if you want to be more of this or whatever, you know, you still it all points back to Yeshua. Absolutely. It yeah, all yeah. points back to him. You yeah. know, so mm -hmm. there's no difference in what um, you, you can have all kinds of different literature. You can have all kinds of different stuff, you know, but uh, you, it all should point back to who. Yeshua is. Yeah. He's the salvation of our lives. He's the one that's uh, always been there, you know. And uh, I've been watching a video, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get it together, but uh, where it says uh, in the beginning, bear sheet, you know, mm -hmm. you break that down, you break that down, you break each Hebrew letter down, and uh, I'm going to try to get it all together and uh, show you guys what I've seen. What, and Gavin may already know this, you know, but yeah. uh, it – I'm not going to say nothing yet, but that's something that I'd cool. like to yeah. bring out. Just, just during any, maybe, maybe next week or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. But um, I, I, I did want to say this, and I know I've been talking a lot. I've been kind of doing. I know here. this has been. No man, you've been doing good. The Nate Lane podcast yeah. is what it is. I got a lot to say. You know, one thing. One, see, Gavin's uh, been holding you back, bro. Here, here, it here's, is. here's the deal. Here's the deal. Okay, so down people down lens. I just want you to know that uh, when I come in to wake up Wednesday, I got to come in unprepared. And here's why, and I'm just going to spill the beans. And this is not getting cut out. If it does get cut out, I'm going to be very upset. But I don't – nobody keeps contact with me. People may say they call me. The only person that really tries is me. Is not even my own brother and not even my, uh, my cousin-in-law. Oh, I thought it was in the running. But uh, Gavin. Gavin always uh, was like, hey, did you know? No, I didn't. Okay, this is what me and Nick – okay, fine. And me and Nick are together – a lot. I know, but you act, you act like there's just some meeting that, that takes like that you're out of. Okay, so here's the thing. Like, even today, right? Even today, Nick calls you, and the first thing you say is, oh, I thought you said 430. 
And I took a step back and I was like, "That already got clarified." Nick never said that anything already got about clarified yesterday. Yesterday, Nick that never said anything no. about four thirty. We he just Nick asked me. He said, "What time do you feel?" And I said, "How come we can't do it Sunday at like whatever?" You know, yeah. there's some other things going on. But even at that Friday evening, right or Friday afternoon, yeah, I said, "What are we going over?" He says, "Oh, I texted you in there." You know, I said, "No, you didn't." <laughs> Yeah, I did. Why didn't you just say it though? So he said, he said, uh, Cause I was man, a man, I didn't text you. My bad, bro. And I'm like, it's all right, dude. This is what I go through since episode one. You know, <laughs> since episode one, I've not I've been hitting the back burner. But anyways, and he said, I'm saying all this to say this. Um, um, you, I may it may look like I'm unprepared, but I, I, it, there's a reason. But I also love not. Yeah. You know, I also love what I do yeah. as far as. How I, you know, come yeah. about doing things in, in a sense of almost like winging it. But I don't want to say winging it because I just, you know, that's a weird term. Well, the thing about it is, like, even from 13 weeks ago, like, we've all been, like, hitting Scripture pretty hard. I would say substantially mm. more than what we were before then. Right. And you've kind of brought a whole new revelation to this podcast. I feel like our best episodes are when we were kind of just mid it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you've inspired me to, like, d- like just... Just be prepared, read something. Pre- yeah. Be prepared to like just talk and hash it out. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. those are our best episodes yeah. for sure. Because like Gavin, I mean, uh, Gavin. What? Let me just say this, and and uh, I ain't I ain't trying to boast, Gavin, right? But Gavin, when I first Gavin started coming into this, you know, me and, when he says that, uh, me and Nick, we we talked to Gavin. Uh, you know, uh, just truth be honest, I bashed Gavin. <laughs> It really, I mean, I was just, and I wasn't like doing it in a mean way, but you know, I would throw a little snide remarks like, dude, you're doing this, you know, like the Bible says you're not supposed to, you know, and so that fueled the fire into Gavin, like mm. in a way that is like, I've never like seen anybody yeah. that young, like Nick talks about Chris, Chris is very knowledgeable. Gavin just come into it. Yeah. Chris has always been into it. It. And I'm just saying this respectfully. You put them dudes side by side, and it it like it, it would be crazy. Like it, you know, nonstop, yeah. just you know, going back and forth on whatever they've learned. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, uh, saying all that, you know, uh, with Gavin coming in, you know, it does make a difference. And I'm not saying that Gavin's better than us or anything like that, but he just brings different things out. Yeah. You know. And so it is a little different. He definitely bench in 205. I can't bench 205. Can you bench 205? Yeah. You can bench 205? Yeah. I could barely do three push-ups the other day, dude. No. Yes, man. I'm so weak right now. What about you? Uh, 205? Yeah. No, you can't. Yeah, I can. No, you can't. Uh, we'll go try it. Okay. 205? No, he can't. Yeah. He can't. Yes, I can. No, can. But what's crazy, yes, is, that, I can. What's crazy yeah. is that Gavin's doing 205. Yeah. Well, look at Gavin. Yeah, his arms are that long. No, but he's though. 142 pounds. Well, no, what I'm saying is, look at Gavin. Like he, he he's stocky. Out. Oh yeah, yeah dude, he's, he's, he's solid. Yeah. yeah. But I wanted to say something. I I, I wanted to say uh, what Brian brought out today. I thought it was cool. Yeah, I know we kind of went off on the rabbit trail. But uh, Brian read this. Was reading in uh, Numbers. Uh, uh, um, and let me just say this: if nobody. Uh, it has anything to do on a Saturday or anything going on on a, a Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, tune in. Just listen to the teaching. You know, th- there's no doctrine. There's no uh, literature that we're going over. It's it's just Bible. You know, we're just – Sakat Kaim and Brian really brings out some stuff that's just amazing, you know. So um, one thing he we was talking – and I say this to say this, that – we was going over the tour portion for today, and it was uh, it was numbers eight and through uh, twelve. Somewhere there's some verses there. Uh, numbers chapter or uh, Bamid Bar chapter eight, Numbers chapter eight through Numbers twelve, and it says in chapter uh, sixteen, it's talking about uh, when the uh, Israel is moving, right, picking up camp, stuff like this, and uh, or picking up the tent. And it says, it says, uh, and on the day that the dwelling place was raised up and the cloud covered the dwelling place, the tent of the witness from, 
from evening until morning, it was above the dwelling place like the appearance of fire. So above the tent, above the tabernacle, above above what, you know, what was there, there was a, a cloud, mm-hmm. right, that looked like fire. Yeah. Okay. And as we know it, yeah. that would be the Spirit of God. Yeah. Nine, okay. nine sixteen. Yes. Yep. So thus, it was continually the cloud covered it by day and the appearance fire by night. When And whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tent after the children of Israel would depart, and in the place where the cloud dwelt, there were children of Israel camp, saying that when the move, the cloud moved, they moved. Mm-hmm. Right? There's no, there's, there's, there's uh, something or they're obeying what Yahweh's doing. So, and it goes down and says, at the mouth of Yahweh, the children of Israel departed, and at, and at the command of Yahweh, they camped. They reminded camped, they remained camped as long as the cloud dwelt above the dwelling place. Even when the cloud lingered many days above the dwelling place, the children of Israel guarded the charge of Yahweh and did not depart. And it was so when the cloud was above the dwelling place a few days, according to the mouth of Yahweh, they camped, and according to the mouth of Yahweh, they depart. And so it was when the cloud dwelt only from evening till morning, when the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they departed, whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud was taken up, they departed. Whether two days or a new moon or a year that the cloud lingered above the dwelling place to dwell upon it, the children of Israel camped and did not depart, but when it was taken up, they departed. At the mouth of Yahweh, they camped, and at the mouth of Yahweh, they departed. They guarded the charge of Yahweh, and at the mouth of Yahweh, by the hand of Moshe. So, in saying, what I'm bringing out is that there's times when when we get into this, when we get into this place that um, we don't know what's going on, we need to understand that when Yahweh speaks, we move, right? If he says go, we go. If he says stay, we stay. It doesn't matter how long the time frame is, right? And I see this in every church. I see this in every, uh, 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 even growing up, you know, I just can't feel the Lord. I can't just do this. Well, the Lord has you in a spot. Mm. He's growing you. He's teaching you. You just need to be able to listen and obey. Yeah. That's the greatest commandment. That's part of love, right? Obeying Yahweh. So, uh, when, it's part of worship. When, yep. when we're, in, when Yahweh is, is telling them, you know, pick up, leave, pick up, leave, pick up, camp here. Mm-hmm. Don't matter how long it is, you know, that is Yahweh showing them, hey, I'm in control. That's right. I'm telling you when to move, when not to move, you know. Mm-hmm. And in, in our lives uh, as men who we are, sometimes we get out of control, mm-hmm. right? And, and and if we were just to listen to Yahweh, he would further our step in everything that we do, you know, because there's a covering over us. That's what it says here in Numbers. There's a covering in, in over us at all times, mm-hmm. right? When we stay, when we move, mm-hmm. we're always following him. Yeah. yeah. So that's what was being brought out today. That was great. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll be right. Nate, back. Nate's been Nate's a little different today, ain't I'm he? Tell you, I, love uh, it. I, I yeah, I love it too. I'm mad about it. He's mad. <laughs> um, you know, and and it, isn't it wonderful to know that you have that covering? Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it, I, th- I think it's a beautiful thing that, that God loves us that much, you know, that Yahweh loves us that much, you know, through through everything that we've been through, you know, um, or everything that we put ourselves through. Let me put it that way. Um, everything that we put ourselves through, he's always been faithful to us, whether or not we've been faithful to him. And... Um, the the whole time Nate was was going, I was just thinking, man, this is, you know, when he said that the Lord is in control, you know, that that's why we should worship. Absolutely. You know, because he is in control, not us. Mm-hmm. You know, Praise not, God for that. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, I've been in control, you know, or felt like I was in control and did some wild things, crazy things. And, and you know, it didn't do nothing for me. It added nothing to my life. Yeah. It was actually taking away from my life. But when, when I, 
you know, realized, had that, that come to Jesus meeting, I guess, yep. Yep. with, uh, with Yeshua, it was, all right, you know, it is, this is, there, there's gotta be a change. There's gotta be something I've got to do differently. And, and living for the Lord is, is to me, you know, when someone gives their life to the Lord, that's, that's the greatest miracle mm-hmm. to me. You know, I just, I think would I like to see people raised from the dead and, you know, new limbs grow back. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But to see someone give their life and turn away, you know, that man, dude, yeah. it just gets me fired and up. That is a passing from death to life. Yeah. 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 You know, and, uh, I did have this written down in Hebrews 12, uh, 28 through 29, man, I read this this week and I was just like, I mean, you know, you read some things in scripture and you're just like, but the, the one day you'll read it again and you're like, Ooh, that hit me a little mm-hmm. different. You know, that's what oh, I felt yeah. reading this. Yeah. And it says, um, I'll let you guys get there first. I think I know where, what it is. Um, yep. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Mm. You know, and we've, we've heard that scripture all our lives. You know, if you've grown up in church, you've heard that scripture all your life. Or, um, but, man, that cannot be shaken. You know, we, 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 uh, we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And we were, we, I, I look back at Yeshua in scripture when he was um, fasting and he was tempted for 40 days, you know, and um, that was a king not being shaken. Mm-hmm. But if you go in, in, you know, the Old Testament, you read about all these kings, like David. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he seen temptation, and he fell to temptation. Yeah. But he, I mean, he repented, but there was other kings that didn't. Yeah. But we see all these physical, you yeah. know, that, that had the, these, that everybody recognized as king. Yeah. And when, when Yeshua came to fulfill, he was a king that could not be shaken. Yep. And. By his nature. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that was, man, it, it's just, um. It's just it's beautiful to me to to see see what the Lord's doing and and my life and in your guys' lives and Gavin's life and Gavin's kids' lives. Yeah, yeah. And um and I know I know we're being attacked differently. We're all being attacked differently. And that's man, I, that's why I've been so hungry just to worship. Mm-hmm. Because when I worship I do feel that peace. Yeah. I do feel some peace and feel uh I feel better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we was talking about men, you know, as men, we, we and I know you, you know, uh, you don't cry or whatever. And Lisa yeah. will tell you, you know, he's so weird. He's so weird he don't cry. You know, to me it cracks me up. But the other night not watching The Chosen, let me tell you that. The Notebook? The Chosen. Oh, The Chosen? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Didn't we tell that story about The Notebook? That just reminded me. No. I'm going to tell it. <laughs> You right. want me to tell it? Go ahead. All right, so. It, it, hang on. Before we get started, The Notebook's one of my most favorite movies. I know. Yeah. And I used to, I used to tr- try and talk uh, just for fun, you know, like yeah. do impressions or whatever. Yeah. Uh, to talk like Ryan Gosling on that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Do one. You have to give me a minute. Go ahead and tell your story. <laughs> Nick was coming over for something. New Grips. Oh no, not that story. No, okay. you ain't telling that story. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Well they all now they're all gonna be nah, asking. Go they, ahead. They don't have to know it. They don't have to know it. Go ahead, dude. Nick departed Nick was like late and arriving to my home. And I called him, I was like, What the heck are you doing? I was like, You left like an hour ago. Where at where you at? He was like, I had to make a stop. What do you mean you had to make a stop? I had to make a stop. And draw my eyes. I'm like, what do you mean you had to draw your eyes? What's up? He's like, I was listening to the notebook. <laughs> I, I, was, I was listening to the audio book. Like, I had read it a couple <laughs> times before, but... <laughs> we probably shouldn't have told that story. Uh-uh. I was expecting a laugh out of him. No. He's... That's disgraceful. Don't. No. We, we, can, we can talk about some movies 
For you, if you You've want. You've never seen me shed a tear. Nate, You've I seen you the had. other night. Nate, just because I, I'll go like this. You yeah. Know, joking. At, at the, at I, don't, the, I don't. Bull, you know. he'll go like this. He'll what, go. What was the movie? <laughs> it's probably Willow. Or something. No, like, you know exactly. I always, I always you know exactly what it was. It was called Secret Garden, <laughs> but I wasn't crying. Oh, for sure. It's a, yeah, no, I wasn't crying. Nate. I just, he always, because I, I, I'll look at him and Nick will just be staring at me. <laughs> and, I, and I'll go, I'll go, that's good, you know, and jokingly. Like, I don't think I've ever cried on a movie um, <clears throat> like like that. Like, Do you even get into the movies, though? Do I? Yeah. Because yeah. uh, your cousin doesn't. Here lately, I haven't been because I sleep. Yeah. Like, I go to sleep too quick. Mm-hmm. But uh, all movies are the same now, so yeah. I don't have any. Yeah, I like, I always watch all the old movies I watched growing up. Yeah. Because now all the movies that come out are the same movies that I watched growing up. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, y'all's cousin doesn't, like, she, I don't know, she can't grasp a movie. Like, it doesn't register to her. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. A, she's going to fall asleep. B, yeah. I'm like, we can, like, watch the movie, turn it off, ask her about the movie. She's like, I have no idea what the movie is about. No, I didn't. Like, honestly, like, you hook up to a lie detector test and everything. There's no way she knows the movie. She's lying. Serious? Seriously? No, I'm just joking. Yeah. Don't tell her I said that. Um, she watches well, every episode all the way through, too, by the way. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I'm very happy. Uh, you don't, do you? No. I don't. I don't. I just. Well, like I mean, them. I do watch them all the way through. I give a view and I give it a like and I move on. Well, I, I watch it. <laughs> you know, I watch I mean, it. I, I was here. I watch it during the edit. You know? Yeah. I was here. And so I know what's out. Yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, I was here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was here. I don't have to watch it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, like, I at least watch it though. I don't watch it. I just as soon as I hear my voice, because I always thought I had a very intriguing. Um, no, you sound like Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? The parrot on Aladdin. <laughs> show me, show me. The parrot on Aladdin. Oh no, yeah, do a voice. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I know you're talking about. Okay. No, I don't sound like that. Dude. But when I hear myself, dude, I'm so like monotone. I, uh, that's what I was saying to nah, mo- you're just you're just listening to you. Like I feel that's like awesome. I sound so dry and nasally. Like nah. like I always got and sinus I can't problems. Stand listening to Nick, I listen to him my whole life. <laughs> so when he pops up, I'm like, listen, y'all are making my head hurt. He's my brother, you know. Laughing too much. Uh, no, I, it's not like that. I'm just joking about that. But I, I don't listen to it because um, I'm here. You yeah. Know? If there's something interesting or something that somebody said, you know, I'll go back. I'll, I'll listen yeah. to it then. But uh, yeah, but you're also clipping it up too, though. So I know. try. But, yeah. You know. listen. Yeah. So before we got off on the notebook story, you know, Nate was talking about we don't cry as men. We, you know, we don't yep. cry. And Chris. And I'm not, and I'm, I'm being sincere, you know, and, and when Chris does, you know, you, you feel something different because it's, it's, when he's worshiping, you kind of feel like he's creating an atmosphere or he's inviting the presence, you know, mm-hmm. so uh, I always like to stay close to Chris yeah. during service, you know, yeah. and we, we always gave him a hard time, but dude, for real, we we really admired that in Chris. Yeah. You know, there's probably something to that though. They so near death experience uh, account like when they're seeing people in heaven, like when they're walking in heaven with them. They said that like you know, because sight and sound and taste and all that stuff isn't the way that we think it is. It's like every sense has like 77 senses attached to it, right? Like sure, that's the way that they describe. It. They're like I can't describe it because it's like the light has a look a sound and a feel to it kind of thing. You know what I mean? But anyway, yeah, that's the way that they describe it, like even taste. When they might eat something, it might, like you can hear how it tastes too. They, yeah, they describe this. It's, it's like it's so much above our... That's normal though, right? What do you mean? Because every time I eat uh, like uh, mashed potatoes and gravy, <laughs> I hear, mmm. <laughs> My head's hurting, seriously. <laughs> but anyway, um, God, where's it going at? Oh, yeah. So it, it says, like, when they're seeing people, it's like uh, the love, right? Because not only are they seeing the love of Yeshua pour out of them, or, but, like, or, but they're, you know what I mean? It's, it's just like this atmospheric thing. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
So I bet Chris is actually like tapping into that. Like, man, dude, cool. uh, it's different, man. I, I'll tell you that. Yeah. You know, people just worship different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. just what the boils down to, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. We. I, uh, I think we've had a lot of fun this episode. Dude, this was great. Uh, we'll have to. Uh, wait till you know. P- go put a vacation fund for Gavin up again. And yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, no, um, I, I just wanted to talk about worship this week. Yeah. Um, and, and and saying that you know we don't have Gavin here, and uh, when we're, you know, I know uh, Crystal had said something about uh, she's enjoying how we're putting. She can't wait till we put start putting things together. Sure. You know. Yeah. 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 And and that's why we're doing this worship. Uh, we kind of got off of that subject for yeah. so when Gavin's here, we're gonna hop right back on that. Sure. And uh, but yeah, yeah, you know we miss Gavin. Yep. Um, or do we? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We miss Gavin. Yeah. Yeah. I took uh, up his twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know we miss Gavin. Uh, I'm very thankful for for today. You know, yep, yep. I, I needed it. I needed to, needed to laugh. Uh, been sad. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm really? just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, with with with, with uh, all that, uh, yeah. Go yep. ahead, Aaron. You mean wraps up? Uh, if you well, no. If you guys got something, um, not I was you, just going to say that him. we do have stuff that we are we are working on. Um, uh, we got some things that we're, we're going to try to get some merch moving. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just looking at ideas. And like I said, um, if we was millionaires, we would already had merch out. Yep. We would already had everything out. We'd already done our giveaway. Yeah. So we're yep. just doing, I mean, I mean, we all, like I said, we're all full-time workers. So not always um, with the economy, the way it is um, t-shirts that were $3 are now seven and a half dollars, you know? Yep. So things are just a little more, you know, so we're yep. just looking into different options but we we are going to get some merch out and we're going to have a lot uh we're going to have some people on that are that are um that uh some of us may have grown up with some of us first time meeting um some people hopefully uh i'm looking at uh, a couple people locally Mm -hmm. you know within locust grove or areas like that Mm -hmm. so um we got we got some more things coming um keep Keep with us. Keep um, um, liking, sharing, everything. Yeah. That, thank you for the support. You know, yeah, the support absolutely been, uh, amazing. You know, we can't look at numbers because at times it is discouraging. But um, we look at we look at it like this. We get to do this another day. Absolutely, you know, yeah. we get to be together another day. Just being amongst each other because we really did kind of grow up with each other, but we didn't. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, so the. Uh, our friends, uh, us at the the round table here, you know, it's it's a blessing at the whole time that we do this, you know. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna end the podcast with some prayer and uh, some deliverance and some sanctification in some of our lives. Yeah. Namely, me. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Do oh. you feel convicted? I don't know. Well, don't you must so. if you. I don't think so. I was just... So what I learned, you know, in in. Uh, because Bible college, because that's what no, we're it wasn't about. Bible college. <laughs> just being in, in the ministry for so long, or yeah. within the church, you know. Um, if you just what I just did, like we're gonna pray for pray for some deliverance, you know. Um, and as a minister, you can look down, you know. The Lord showed me something. We pray for some deliverance, and you just lock <laughs> eyes with somebody. Somebody's like, they know what I just did. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's what um, that's what I just did. There. Uh, yep. Washington it's called uh, reverse pastorology. Reverse pastorology? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Washing the blood, baby. All right, let's pray. <laughs> we love you, Lord Jesus, and uh, we thank you for all that you do uh, for our lives. We pray that you would continue to move us in your direction. Continue to, to move on our lives. Uh, continue to allow us to have the opportunity to be an impact uh, not only to, to those down lens that are listening, but to um, the people that are around us in our everyday lives. Um, keep us faithful to your word. Keep us um, keep us obedient to your word, and keep us uh, 
reminded every day of, 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 of your love for us and, and, and for your protection for us. You know, we, we serve you as our king and as our master, but, but you're such a great king and you're such a great master for us, Lord. We would, we would want it no other way. I, I, any other way is just, is, just, is just not good, and, and we just thank you for that. We thank you for all that you do for our lives, for our, our spouses' lives, for our future spouses' lives. And um, we just give you all the praise and glory. And in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Go home. Read your Bibles. That's a wrap.